The one man that got the S on his chest. Russell Cam Newton? Westbrook. Oh. No, 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 no. Cam Dwight, didn't die for that Dwight ball. Howard? Cam, Cam didn't die for that ball in the Super Bowl. <laughs> that ball was Russell scripted. West, you think Westbrook <laughs> wouldn't have died for that football? Westbrook would have went through the ground to get that football. Football was scripted. We're supposed to be the losers, but we win it, no. They used to laugh at us, now we win it, no. They used to tell me never in my life. Man, what is going on, folks? Welcome to another exciting episode of Strong Arm Sports Podcast. We are the realest sports podcast in all the land. Am I right? True. I be knowing, man. If this happens to be the first time you guys are watching or listening to the show, I'm one half of the show. I go by the name of Case Spade, the prospect. And I'm your boy, Paris 57 and together we form Strong Arm Sports. Spade, I'm excited. Why? A lot of things happened this week. A lot mm-hmm. of things I'm probably going to bang the cannon on. And I think okay. you are. I think you are as well. Spade. Yep. Without further ado, I mean, I want to I want to say we're not going to have a show before Valentine's Day, so if you're with your loved ones and y'all doing what you do, play Strong Arm Sports in the background. Forget all That's that right. Keith Sweat, R. Kelly, and all that. Play us in the background. Tell your girl, tell your significant other, listen, bae, this is what's going down. I got to listen to my guys. I think you'll enjoy it, too, while we doing what we do. Play us in the background during Valentine's Day. Spade. Significant mood setter. This podcast is a significant yes, mood setter. You yes, sir. Mood. That's right. So I want to say happy Valentine's Day to all the supporters before yep. we start. But Spade. Mm-hmm. Gotta it's starting the NFL, bro. And I know it's y'all good. like, what? The NFL over. But guess what? We didn't talk yet. We didn't talk about the Super Bowl. The things that transpired in the Super Bowl, Spade. Atlanta Falcons, they came out looking like buzzsaws. They was, it looked like they was giving out the fade. They was handing out the Bieber. It seemed yep. like they was handing out cuts. Spade. Typical, typical New England fashion. They was able to put something together in the second half and was able to come back and beat the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl spade. I was I was on Twitter popping my crap when Atlanta jumped up. And, but after a while, I said, oh, I started doing the math. The score wasn't adding up. Even when even when the kicker missed the kick, spade, I was like, oh. I don't know, Spade. Give me your thoughts about the Super Bowl that just passed. Atlanta Falcons, New England Patriots. Talk to your boy. Especially with you being an Atlanta native. You being from Georgia. It's terrible, 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 terrible. I don't know where to start. (laughs) Now, I hate that I couldn't bring these guys to show immediately after when the rage was still burning so I had to calm you down, bro. You was hot. I was really upset. So let me me, me start here. First of all, you guys know I'm not a Falcons fan. I've already had to apologize to the Falcons fan because I predicted you guys to go 5-11 and this season, not 11-5. and So, first of all, kudos on that great season. However, people always say to me, Spade, you live in Georgia. Why are you not a fan of Georgia's teams? And I go, man, over the years, the heartbreak is just built up and built up and mm-hmm. built up. I cannot rock with the local team. It hurts me to, to see these guys get this far and not make it. I don't know, bro. Like, I don't... I, I feel like I should hand it back off to you and let you talk some. Or I might just. I, I, just, I want to say a couple of plays where it went bad. A couple of plays. One, it was a. I think it was a second down, if I'm not mistaken, Spade. Mm-hmm. And they got a holding call. Yep. They had completed the pass, but it was a holding call. Then the the next play, it was a. I'm like, I'm in my house, Spade, and I'm saying. Just get about five to ten yards. You don't have to play for the first down. A field goal makes it a two-possession game. That next play, I think it was Freeman because Telvin Coleman had got hurt. They, now, the experts, the people that know the Falcons, the people around the Falcons said Freeman wouldn't have been in on that play. Coleman would have been in. Uh, look, I don't, I don't tune into Atlanta like that. They said Coleman would have been on, been in on that play. It wouldn't have been Freeman because Coleman is a better receiving running back and he's a better pass blocker. He's a better uh, running back with protection. So he said Coleman would have been in on that play, but if I'm not mistaken, Coleman got hurt. So Freeman missed the block and that, and that, you know, he got, Matt Ryan got sacked and he fumbled and that was kind of the turning point, but it was another, it was another, it was another, uh, a play, Spade. Mm-hmm. New England was driving. I don't know if it was the ensuing series with New England getting the ball off that turnover, but New England had the ball in the red zone. They dropped Vic Beasley back 
into coverage, and they threw a pass. I think it was to Martellus Bennett's yep. fate. Yep. And fate Beasley in tipped the ball. And in my house, I'm like, bro, this is the Super Bowl. This is all or nothing. It was right here. Y'all, y'all may say I'm being too hard on Beasley, and I'm expecting too much from Beasley, but I think you got to make – that has to be a turnover. And I know – a defensive player is like, well, he didn't score on my watch, so I'm good. But that has to be a turnover right there because that gives Atlanta the ball back. And then they ended up, if I'm not mistaken, running the ball in, and that was ball game. Yep. And when they when they scored right there, I was like, yo, Atlanta going to lose this game. It was a few more plays that I could talk about, but those were the two that really stood out to me. I it, it was, I'm not even an Atlanta fan, man, and I felt sick. Yeah. For Atlanta, man. I felt sick. Now, for Spade, me and you had a discussion on this show. And then I'm going to be quiet and let you go. Me and you had a discussion on this show when uh, when we did the picking game. I said, man, I just had a feeling New England was going to win this game. But I was rooting. I was in this house rooting for Atlanta. I even said on the show, I wouldn't even be mad if Atlanta win and I lose the picking game. I, wa- I wanted Atlanta to win because I told you, Spade, New England Patriot fans are worse than Cowboys. I don't care what nobody say. They have taken over as the worst fan base in in, in sports. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, you can make that it argument. It kills me that New England fans, they, oh, I wasn't never worried. Man, you lying. Yeah. Y'all was down like 28 to 3. You telling me you was never worried? You was never worried? That's a lie, man. Yeah. Like, New England Patriot fans are definitely worse than Cowboy fans. I, it, I, I just felt sick. For Atlanta, bro. I felt sick for him. It, it was terrible. Let me go back. Now, you was talking about a couple of plays, and those plays was also big plays. But to me, it goes back. It goes all the way back. First of all, you got a place to blame for this loss on Kyle Shanahan. And I, I don't know why I keep seeing on social media all these people saying, man, Atlanta lost because they went conservative. They didn't go conservative. Conservative is running the damn football. That's what they should have done. They came out passing on first and 10. They was just doing crazy stuff that wasn't making sense. Devontae Freeman was averaging damn near six a pop. He only, I, if I'm not mistaken. Spade, but, I mean, that's a conversation for another day. I didn't Go hear ahead. what you say. I said that's where we disagree, but, I, 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 you know, that's a conversation for another day. I don't think cause just pl- being conservative is just running the ball. I think it's. Playing not to lose, so whether that's check downs or but but runs I, I don't or understand not, how passing be, on first not, and ten is playing not to lose. I mean, but I don't I don't understand. It can it can be it can be not playing not to lose, babe. Like they wasn't. I don't think they were really. In, in it, I'm talking defense. I'm talking the whole aspect, not just offensively. I don't feel like they was trying to get after Brady, like they was in the first cut. I think they was. When I say conservative, that's what I mean. Maybe other people have other. Analogies, but like I said, that's a conversation for another day. But go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna just go on this little tirade, Falcon fans. If you want to, this might be the time you want to just sit your device down and just walk off or something. Maybe you don't want to hear this. Bang the light first, though. Bang the light. <laughs> yeah, and tell a friend, tell a friend. But anyway, yeah. Here's the deal. The play calling to me was atrocious. I don't fault the defense for not getting after Brady. I don't fault Vic Beasley for not getting the pick. I don't fault any of the defensive players because they were gassed. They could not get off yeah. the field. The offense consistently was going three and out or maybe five, six plays and out and putting these guys back on the field. Knowing the Patriots ain't running nothing but check downs to the backfield, quick outs, oh, quick tweeted. hitches, and drags. That's their it whole damn playbook. That's all they was doing. It was drag screens, zig routes. All like, they was it doing. was all the bull crap. That's all they was doing. So yeah, the, the toughest the Falcons, route to stop in the NFL, the, in any form of football. The Go Falcons' ahead. defense was gassed, first of all. Absolutely nothing yeah. they could do. Gassed. On offense, knowing that your defense is gassed, for one, you if nothing else, you know that running the football eats up the clock. Possibly wears down the defense, and if nothing else, it gives your defense a breather. But if you come out passing and you're getting incomplete passes, ain't no time running off the clock. You're going three and out before you know it, and you're putting them big, tired guys back on the field. And that is basically the whole second half. That's what happened in the second half. That's one. For two, it was one play in particular. Atlanta had to, this was on the drive that Julio Jones made one of the most amazing catches I ever seen before in my really life. Did. One of the best yeah. catches I ever seen before in my life. Atlanta got the ball yeah, really inside did. the 25. They was like on the 24-yard line, maybe the 25-yard line in field goal range. I'm watching this game. 
Never played in the NFL, never been a coach, don't have the credentials to do so. So I know those guys are smarter than me. I'm watching this game and I'm saying, all they need is three here. They come out and try to pass, first of all. I go, oh my God, look. They only need three here. They only need three here. On third down, in field goal range, Kyle Shanahan has to call a running play. He has to. He understands that for one, his defense is tired. For two, they need points. They need some points. He, he calls a passing play. And I'm saying, the one thing you cannot do here is take a sack. You cannot take mm -hmm. a sack here. What happens? Matt Ryan gets sacked. They are out of field goal range. They have to punt that ball off. And right there for me, that's where they lost the game. I'm watching it with some friends. I said, I feel like it's over. They're like, no, nah, man, we still got time. The, the clock on our side. I said, man, Atlanta's offense can't move the ball in this defense. They tired. They can't stop. I knew at that point it was over. New England drive all the way down the field. They got to go for two. I said, I haven't seen anything in this drive that tells me this Atlanta defense has a stop in them. They do the little fake high snap, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Easiest two-point conversion of the year. Easy. Walk right in. Cool. They still got an eight-point lead. You get the ball back. They can't do anything with it. New England drives all the way down the field. I said, watch they get the two-point conversion again. They get the two-point conversion again. I said, if Atlanta, I really felt like it was over. I said, it's over. Because if Atlanta offense, if they win the coin toss, hell, they, they don't have two and a half. They don't have a quarter and a half to get three points and couldn't do it. I don't feel like they can get down the field right now. Their confidence got to be shot. The play calling is shitty. And they, if they don't win the coin toss, their defense is still tired. They don't win the coin toss. New England march straight down the field. Now, and I'm going to shut up. Some backstory I want to give you guys. Dan Quinn, head coach at the Atlanta Falcons, was recently the defensive coordinator for the New England, I mean, for the Seattle Seahawks in their Super Bowl against the New England Patriots. In a situation mm -hmm. where they was right there at the goal line, y'all know, biggest play, run the football, give it to Marshawn Lynch. They elect to pass the football, and it cost them the game. So can you imagine mm -hmm. being the defensive coordinator in that situation where you might be thinking, look, my defense has fought hard. We right here. We got a chance to win the game. Let's punch it in. But you're the defense coordinator. You ain't got the clout to make that call, so you don't say nothing. And you watch your team lose the game. You fast forward a few years, two, three years in the future, you are the head coach. You in a situation where you know you need to run the ball, just like you was over in Seattle. You know what you need to do. Your offensive coordinator says pass. You got the clout, Dan Quinn. You got the clout to say, uh-uh. I've been here before. We're not doing this again. Let's run the ball. But even if you don't, you grab your MVP winning quarterback. We're talking the most valuable player in the league. You grab him before he walks out on the field and you say, Matt, the one thing we can't do here is take a sack. If you drop back and your hot read ain't instantly open, you throw that bitch out of bounds. You got to say that to him. You cannot take a sack on that play. It was, it's, it's tough. It is the worst Super Bowl loss in the hit. And then how fitting for the Falcons to be in the record books for the worst Come from behind Super Bowl loss in the history of the NFL. It's terrible, man. Hmm. Terrible. Terrible. So when people say, Spade, how do you live in Georgia and you're not? Watch Super Bowl. Super Bowl 51. That's what I say. <laughs> 51. I mean, it was an, it was another place, Spade, where Offer could have just moved his leg. Mm. I mean, <laughs> uh, it, it was a ton of plays that happened. I mean, I, I just feel sick. I felt like I, I'm over it now. I mean, I, I'm, I ain't had no stock in this game. I didn't care. My team wasn't in it. But I just felt sick for Atlanta. I, I'm just tired of New England. You know, now it's all the it's Brady the GOAT talk. And I mean, it, it's been some notable um, um, Hall of Fame quarterbacks that have came out and was like, man, no, Brady ain't the GOAT. Joe Montana being one of them. They, I know people going to be like, oh, they just hate us. They just hate us. But I mean... It's, you can argue. Listen, I, that's, that's a conversation for another day, too. I'm not about to get into the Brady talk. Anyway, let's move forward. Can we talk basketball, please? Football season's over. And the way it ended, yeah, I don't, I don't really want to talk football on. for a long time, bro. Long time. Hold up. Hold I don't want to talk it. There's some cowboy news, nah, too. We good. But we can move we on. Good. <laughs> All right. So the NBA spent a week long promoting and advertising their game of the week. This big game, Oklahoma yep. City Thunder welcomes back. First time home since one night of there. Kevin Durant and Golden State Warriors return to OKC. Real big game. Build to be like the clash of two titans. Game went down, man. It definitely 
It definitely entertained. There was some fireworks during the game. Paris, how you feel about the game, bro? I, I just want to say, I, I got I get it. Please believe I understand. Kevin Durant leaves and he joined the Monsters. We get it, Spade. We understand. But all this build up, man, everybody, if anybody, if anybody thought the Thunder was going to beat the Warriors last night, then they're delusional. It, out, especially outside of OKC. If you're a Thunder fan, oh, yeah. If you're a Thunder fan, I can well, see let me it. ask you this. But if anybody else tuned into that game because they thought the Thunder was going to beat the Warriors, they're crazy. Spade, wait, let me tell you something. But wait, honey. what about the people who are going to tell you the Thunder just beat the Cavaliers? They just beat the Cavs. Yeah, but the Cavs been in the struggle, Juice Spade. And I think they was off a of back-to-back, too. Because they said that they and, was going to rest starters and ended up not resting them. And God forbid, God forbid, if Bron, Spade, we, me and you talk about this all the time on this show. If Bronny, I, I, I don't even know the stats of, the, of that game between the Thunder and the Cavs. I don't even know. But if Bron ain't locked in for whatever reason or Bron in his, you know, Spade, sometimes Bron just get in that passive mode. You know what I mean? Where he just be geeking. Me and you, me and you talk about it all the time. That we think the Cavs a lottery team without Bron. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we we won't say that without uh about the about the Warriors because they got Clay, they got Steph, they got Durant, they have Draymond. So if one of those dudes are having a bad game, it, it's it's rare. Let me say this: I'm not going to say it can't mm-hmm. happen, but it will be rare that all four of those games are just all four of those guys are just have an off night. It, it'll be rare. Trust me. It'll be rare. Somebody gonna be on. Somebody. Yeah. Like we looked, we seen in the finals. I think it was Game Seven. Spade. They kind of shut down uh, Curry, but but Draymond was he was alive and yeah. well. Draymond was alive and well. But Spade, I'm just mad at the NBA for making this build up of this game. And I get it. It's because of the Durant and Westbrook thing. I get it. But that game, nobody thought, nobody thought the the uh, Warriors was going to lose to the Thunder. And I love Russell Westbrook. Westbrook showed up last night. Spade, before the game started last night, me and you was in the, in the party. I said, Spade, OKC don't have enough. And you agree. Right. They don't have enough to compete with right. those guys. Westbrook, I think he had 40 points. They don't have other pieces enough to compete with those guys, especially with cancer being right. hurt. Come on, man. They don't, they don't have That's enough, true. man. They don't have enough. Spade, before you go, one more point. I got a problem with them. It was like, oh, my God, this is the biggest. I mean, all over the TV, it was like, this is the biggest game of the year. It's a regular season game. Calm down. It's one game. I get it, though. Talking about it's the biggest game I, of the I year. I hate they no, build it's this not. Act, but I get it. The, the NBA, man, they like anybody else. They, 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 want, they want ratings. And they know that people... We got this. We got this attraction to drama. If you don't believe me, man, check any of these reality TV shows, which I yeah, refuse to watch. By the way, let me go ahead and make sure I set that out in the air. I don't watch reality TV <laughs> because they build them on drama. On like even if it's fictitious drama, they're gonna build these shows on drama. Yeah. So the NBA know that they got drama between Golden State and OKC. So you get other people to tune into it. OKC bit into it too. They they was I don't know if they were selling those shirts or giving the shirts away, but they had the cupcake shirts trying to say that the Warriors are soft. Uh, some of the fans went a little extra, had pictures of cupcakes with Kevin Durant's face in it. Uh, it was really good for entertainment purposes until tip off. Once the game started, then mm-hmm. you get all the drama out of it, and you get to the fact that you have a really good Golden State team versus a middle of the road OKC team, and you can't get past that. Yep. So I. If the league really wants to build this, probably need to pull some strings and try to get my boy Russell a few extra pieces over there. Or, you know, make them chairs a little softer, knowing that Kansas going to punch them. But mm-hmm. at any rate, I get it. Mm-hmm. The drama was there. Uh, Russ, I, I honestly feel like Russ and KD, I don't, I don't think that's fake. I really don't think it's fake. Now, I think KD is willing to be friends with Russ anytime Russ get ready. I don't see any willingness yeah. in Russ to be KD's friend right now. I don't see it. It was even drama after the game, bro. I don't know if you heard or not, but it was a manager of a very popular steakhouse in Oklahoma City that declined Kevin Durant's people, representatives. They wanted to rent the restaurant out. We're talking $30,000 to $35,000 to rent that restaurant out. And the manager who you know wants this money, that's an easy night for him. Mm -hmm. Say he had to tell him no because he know a lot of the OKC players come to his restaurant after games and he didn't feel like it would be fair. Fair ain't even the word. Can you imagine what sign that would have sent 
for the home team to be barred from a restaurant wow. because the visiting team that just kicked their ass on the court is in there just smacking on steaks. That wouldn't have went well at wow. all. So, oddly enough, Kevin Durant and some Golden State Warrior players were allowed to come in, and they did go there and eat. At the same time, they said Russell Westbrook was there. He was on a separate side of, of the restaurant, and they never interacted whatsoever. Like, I would have got to the restaurant, and I would have said, KD's here? I just eat McDonald's or something. Like, that. Uh, Mila Perry said that must be one hell of a steak for them guys to all want to go yeah, there really. and eat. But the drama was definitely there. I get it. It's just, you know, the drama kind of goes out the window once it's a tip-off. You got two basketball teams. You got one that's very, very good. Yeah, I mean, it was a 73-win team, man. I don't think anybody seen the Thunder beating those guys. Now, I'm not saying the Warriors can't lose a game. I'm and they can lose that, to the Thunder. But I'm saying last night. They could. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I'm saying, man. Like, Spade, let me – um, it's also reports out there, and I I definitely think OKC need to pull the, pull the trigger on this. There's reports out there that they are potentially in the hunt or in the trade rumor mill – about them potentially getting Wilson Chandler from Denver. They absolutely need to make that happen. They need to get Westbrook some help over there. I don't I mean, whatever you need to trade. Long as, I mean, as long as it's not Oladipo or Westbrook, everybody else is everybody else can be gone. They can be, And Stephen Adams. I finna say not. As long as it's not those three pieces, those three pieces, everybody else can be gone. I agree. I agree. So, I mean, they need to, they need to get Wilson Chandler. What, if, if you're not getting anything from Wilson Chandler, we know that dude can score the ball. And it, they need they they gotta get Westbrook some help, man. Yep. That's why I don't I get like I said I understand why the NBA built this to be this clash of the titans matchup, but the, the Thunder's not good enough. That's a seventy three win team over there, and they didn't have KD. Like, exactly. Come on, I mean they couldn't beat they couldn't beat the Warriors with KD, man. Spade, so, you ready to move on? Let me. Uh-huh. I, I want to ask you a question about the same game, All right. bro. I already know. I already know which way I'm leaning, but I want to get your opinion first. Spade, is it time for Westbrook and Durant to bury the hatchet? Should they, should they bury the hatchet? Uh yeah, yeah, they should. And, and man, if you Russ, mm. I get it. I get it, Russ. Mm. I will be hurt. I not even hurt because like everybody keeps saying, Kevin Durant has the right to do what's best for him and his family. He made the decision that's best for him and his family. I don't think anybody is making that argument. Nobody's upset with that. But this man that was once referred to as my little bro, LaParis, me and you talk about this. That's a younger generation, man. That ain't really a grown man. Like, young guys, they love to call folks they bro. Everybody's they bro. And and if you say, what's up, bro, I ain't talking about that. But if I say, this guy's my little brother, then that goes past just being an associate. That Like, you're my... That mean I, I love you like family. Like I say, Le Paris is my bro. Not even. I ain't making me, a let decision. Let me intervene, Spade. Let huh? me intervene, cause that go to me. If I be like Spade, I consider you my brother. To me, that goes past friendship. Yeah. That goes past friendship to me. Agree. Like we ain't just friends, in my opinion. Right. If I to be like, yo, that's my brother. Like this is this is where you know it gets a little weird with me. But go ahead, continue. Yeah, I mean so. If you can go out and say that Russ is my little brother, like I love this dude like my little brother. Yeah. We've seen him bang the cannon for Russ. Like when Mark Cuban said that Russ ain't a star. He wouldn't even let Russ talk. They were like, Russ, how you feel Word. about that? KD was like, I got this. He's an idiot. That's what. Like if he don't think he's a star, he's an idiot. So to go from that to hearing Russ say, I found out like you guys found out through social media on my phone. That's crazy. That's crazy. And that hurt. So it's you see Russ... And it comes off as anger and, and, you know, I'm angry, but it's hurt. It's hurt. Like, if this man made a decision to leave our show and I found out watching TV or on Twitter, I would be hurt. And I, I feel like that that's going to take some time to, to heal. It's going to take some time to go away. But eventually, you, you got to let go because you start to look like the scorned ex. Like, if you still pissed off with your ex at some point, you look like you the one that's scorned. Say, hey, man, he did what he feel like is best for him. I wish him the best, but the hell with him. I care about what goes on over here and keep it smoking. That's what I think. I think Westbrook has handled it great. He has. First first and foremost. I think he has handled You say you think he handled it bad? I, I think he's handled it great. He had his moments, though, like with the photographer's vest, and he I, he's took his stance. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, that happens, man. I mean, that happens. But I want, I want to say, I'm not mad. Do I think it's time to bury the hatchet? I'm going to say no. I you don't think so, that, but I'm a little, I mean, I mean a little bit, and I want to say lot, it's yeah. not, it's not, it's not because of the fact 
that Katie left. That's not why. It's it's Katie's demeanor, Spade. Like, True. it's like he hates. Like, he does. bro, I, it's like a different person. That's not the person that I, when I think, in my opinion, let me say this. I think when Westbrook looks at KD, that's not the person that Westbrook knew. Like, his whole demeanor has changed. And, and you know, Spade, that happens. You start hanging around new new friends. You start acting like new friends. Yeah. You start acting like your new friends. You But but that shouldn't change you as a person to your core. Right. And I think KD has changed in his core. Like, it, not just his demeanor. I think his core has changed. The way you, KD talk about OKC, not just Westbrook. But OKC, it, it 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 don't sit well with me. It's it it spews hate to me. Like yo, I like he can't stand those guys. Yeah, and, and like they didn't do anything to KD. Yeah, for him to have that type of demeanor towards them, and they didn't even do nothing. I don't. I yeah, I wouldn't. Not not this fast. It's still too soon for me, bro. I I, I don't think it's time to bury the hatchet. It's funny. For me, his whole demeanor change, and it, I feel like Westbrook don't see the same person when he looks at KD. You know, you talking about him changing, and uh, last night it was a few of us on the game, and we was talking about this, and and I said the other Golden State Warriors come out and they and they they tell the media that Kevin Durant expresses to them how important it is yeah. that they don't just beat yeah. uh, OKC. He want to destroy them, and like he verbalizes it, and that's okay. Yeah, I mean I can understand you not want to lose to the team that you just left because that'll look bad. But it takes me back to Cantor asking him, where was this in the playoffs? Like, I've never seen Kevin Durant that adamant for a win. I feel like if he wanted that, if he wanted that finals, that Western Conference final series that bad, I, I think I think at the very least they go to the NBA championship. Not saying they win it. I don't know if you saw it, bro. It was an interview after the game. And it's funny. I, I said this before. Let me say it again. For me to hate Draymond on the court as much as I do, I love this guy in the interview. Like, I love Draymond Green's interviews. He's always mm -hmm. so calm and to the point and coherent, whereas he's just the opposite of that on the court. And I get it. Like, if I'm a Golden State fan, I probably love him. But since I'm not, to me, he's just all over the place and he's so ragey and I don't, I don't like him on the court, but I love him in interviews. But in the interview, he said that, it was a chance that he wasn't going to play. I think he said it was a chance he wasn't going to travel. And he said that Kevin came to him and told him, I need you here. Like, this is important. I want this. And he said that during that game, Kevin Durant was the emotional leader during that game. He said that even when they was up big, KD would be walking around telling them, let's, let's, let's stay on it. And the one quote that stuck with me said Kevin Durant told them, let's keep our feet on their throats. Where was that when you was up 3-1? Where was that? So I just got an issue. I'm like, why is it so? I don't know. I can't wrap my mind around it. I understand not wanting to lose to your old team, but he's got this burning desire to not just beat OKC, but to bury OKC, and I don't understand why he hates them. I, that's what I'm saying. And, like, they didn't do any. You, you left, bro. I, don't, I, I would. It's too soon for me, bro, but I'm a little mean. I'm mean. So it's too soon for me. It's too soon for me. Because, like I said, th the Thunder didn't do anything to Westbrook. I mean, to uh, KD. KD decided to leave. True. And it's like he hate them. Like, he, he had the bad divorce. Like, they got to keep the house in the... You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? exactly. Like, they, like they, they got to keep the house in the car, and he got to pay them alimony. Like, you decided to leave. Yeah, man. Let's keep it moving, man. Let's move on, man. We're going to stay in the NBA for this next topic. Uh, this past week, where it was good for some, it was pretty bad for a few. And I'm talking about the injury bug. The injury bug was yeah. out last week. It was biting NBA players, and it bit some people that it has bitten before. Let me give you names. Yeah. Trust the process himself, Joel Embiid, with what they are calling a minor meniscus tear. I don't care how minor it is. I would be concerned with the big fella. And, man, it's, I hate to see this, man. Milwaukee was looking like the team to keep an eye on. I'm not saying they was going to win anything big this year, but they was definitely an exciting team to watch. And Jabari Parker had a drive to the basket where his knee kind of buckled or something. None contact mm. on the drive to the basket. He is back out. Bro, like if you are Milwaukee or if you are Philadelphia, how mm. concerned are you with your two young stars I'm, being injured again? I'm concerned. Now, they say MB don't require surgery, but you just don't want your big to go. I mean, He's already on restricted minutes. Right. Yeah, I know. 
spade. He he is the lone. I don't want to say lone bright spot, but he is the bright spot. He the one that got, got the Phil spade. Let me tell you something, bro. I watched the Philadelphia Sixers because I want to see Joel and B oh, yeah. play. We got a homie. We got a homie named MK. Y'all know him, MK47. The homie went to an Atlanta game when they played the Sixers. He was like, at least I get to see MB play. MB didn't even play. He yep. didn't even know. MB didn't even play. Yeah, he was pissed. <laughs> like, he was mad because yeah. he couldn't see MB. Like, I tuned in. I got the NBA League pass. I watched the Philadelphia Sixers because I want to see MB play. I think MB. A healthy Embiid, in my in my opinion, has superstar potential. Superstar, definitely not star. Superstar potential, and it just sucks. I feel bad for the kid because it sucks it does. that 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 he that he got injury that he got injured. Same thing with Jabari Parker. Jabari Parker was putting up having a career year. He ain't been putting up twenty points a game, man. Having a great year. Now Milwaukee, they still. I mean, the East sucks, so they probably could make a push for the playoffs because the East suck. But Jabari Parker, I mean, everything was going right for Jabari Parker this year. 20 a game or close to 20 a game. They was just getting Middleton back. Middleton yep. is back now. And Middleton come back and they lose Jabari Parker. I just feel bad for Jabari Parker. He's been having a, 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 a career year. And for them to lose him, man, it sucks. Injury sucks. Now, does that mean these guys can't bounce back? With modern medicine, these guys bounce back. It just sucked that the same me that the same me. That Jabari Parker uh, messed up before. It's the same knee that he tore up this time. If I'm not mistaken, the same thing with Joel Embiid. This is the same knee he had surgery on, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. I, it's, it's, it's bad, man. I feel bad for these two these two uh, talented guys, man. Yep. They they definitely had, had a bright future. And I think hopefully they are able to return and still be the same player, if not better. Spade. We usually don't talk about high school games on this show. Sometimes we'll talk about a guy like you. I, I know you talked about when you seen Eric Berry playing high school space. Oh yeah. So we usually don't talk. We usually don't talk about high school basketball or high school football on this show. But something happened this week. We gotta talk about this. A bro. kid by the name of Lamelo Ball mm-hmm. scored ninety two points, mm-hmm. babe. And I don't want to be. I don't want to be an a hole and say, oh, well, the kid was this, this, and that, babe. Mm-hmm. But social media, and I, I want to say that social media definitely helps with these type of situations because it goes viral and back in our day space we ain't had no social media we had like myspace not even myspace we had like black planet it was like black <laughs> black planet around that time i cannot but it confirm wasn't nor deny all, it wasn't all these social uh social media outlets to make everything go viral or blow up and explode space mm-hmm. people going crazy about Lamelo ball 92 this wasn't the first time we've seen a high nah, school dude not at all. get buckets like this not at all get buckets like this but it just blew up they saying this dude is the next coming of greatness spade what do you think about uh mellows 92 i am torn on it because okay you know i went through i went through an emotional roller coaster let me take y'all on it okay so timeline is blowing up the mellow ball scores 92 points now we already knew about this kid for one because his older brother yep. plays at ucla who i like by the way now the first time I saw this kid, because I don't follow high school sports, as you guys know, was the video of him dribbling up the court. He points to the half court line. He walks to half court. He pulls the three. He bangs it. So that kind of got it. It was a lot of people already on him. I mean, it's three of these guys. It's three of these brothers, and they all tough. So a lot of people already knew about him. For a lot of people mm-hmm. like me, this was our first time seeing this guy, and that put him on our radar. And since then, he's become, you know, a bit of a phenom, if you want to call him that. Being fair, a bit of yeah. a phenom. So I see LaMelo Ball scores 92 points. I said, what? This kid is... Y'all you know, think I was on running some video game stuff. I said, I got to see this. Well, it didn't take long before it was a video. I think it was a 15-minute video of all of his 92 points. And it started off pretty respectable. And at some point, it was a whole lot of him not even coming past the half-court line. Which makes me yep. feel one or two way. When I saw that, I was like, oh, man, look at him. He cherry-picking like a... But then on the other hand, I was like, why is the opposing coach not letting a guy stay back? What the hell are they doing? Why are all five of them running down the court and leaving him back there for the long outlet pass? And then I got to thinking, wait a minute. They must, they got all these kids to buy into that. Because if 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 I'm a parent who's got a kid on that team, I want to know, can my kid be the stay back guy next game? Like, can this be LaMelo's game to stay back? Next game, can my kid stay back? 
and get all these shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, I saw the interview his dad gave. His dad said that he could easily average 50 points a game next year. He said next year be the first time that one of his kids don't have to share the spotlight. It's going to be his team next year. He said this was just a preview of what y'all going to get next year when it's his team. This kid is only 15 years old. He said he once scored 100 points in a game in the age 10. One thing is for sure the kid can play. He's taking a lot of flack for cherry picking. He was indeed cherry picking. He was. But he he was pretty impressive. Like at times they showed the defense getting back and I've seen them beat triple teams and get to the basket with a layup. So one thing is for sure the kid can play. Now in that game he shot 7 of 22 for, from beyond the arc for 31%. He, you know, he's just out there just shooting crazy numbers, but I'm torn, bro. He a 15-year-old kid that scored 92 points. I won't I won't hate on that. Um, and I'm listening to his dad talk. His dad seems like the mouthpiece, if you, if you know what I mean. His dad kind of got that Dun King about him. You know, his dad, like, they going to have to get some pros out there to stop Melo. He can do this. Like, he can do mm-hmm. this every day. Nobody. So the dad is definitely the mouthpiece, and the dad knows exactly what he's doing. He's building a hype. He's making sure that his kids get a free education and possibly a trip to the NBA. And as a father myself, if my kid was scoring 92 points in a high school game, I wouldn't give a damn if he ever left the paint. I would be doing everything this dad is doing. So it, it makes me torn. As a sports fan, I, I was a little, I was a little disappointed when I saw how he scored it. But you know, as a as a father and and trying to put myself in his situation, hey, I, I can dig it, man. I can dig it. Big game. You kind of quiet over there. How you feeling? Points is 92, 92 points is ninety two points. True. But when I watched the video, Spade, I was disappointed because I'm expecting to see him just, you know, just be lights out. I want you guys to, I want you guys to look up a guy by the name of Dewan Wagner, Wagner from Candom High School, New Jersey. He scored 100 points in the game, and when I when I, when they said Melo scored 92, I was expecting to see something like what Dewan Wagner did. Just look the video up, and that's all you need to see. He was saucing dudes up. He was pulling threes. At one point, DeJuan Wagner got so high, he was like jacking from damn near half court. He put up 100 points. Like I said, this ain't the first time we done seen a high school dude put up crazy points, a ton right. of points. Like, this isn't, the, this isn't the first time. But when I watched the video, and I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to demean him. He a kid, man. He a kid. If I scored 92 points, I probably, I wouldn't care how I scored him either. 92 points is 92 points. But, I mean... At one point, he was just like, man, I don't got to. To me, it looked like he was like, I don't got to get back on defense. He was doing a little slow try, and then once his team got to stop, he took off sprinting down the other side. I was like, damn, where is this Where is this sprinting to get back on defense? But I'm an I'm a old man. I'm, a, I'm old. Like, I, I want to see I want to see the effort on both sides of the ball, not just with scoring. Like you said, he didn't shoot, you know, that, that well from the three. A lot of his points came from, in my opinion, 60 of them hoes came from from cherry yeah. picking, at least, <laughs> at least. I, like I said, I, I don't want to demean the kid. 92 points is 92 points, but let's slow our roll. They was putting his face on Wilt Chamberlain's body. Yeah. I, I, easy, yeah. easy, y'all. I just want to say easy. The crazy thing is, man, I, I, I don't like talking about high school kids. Because they're kids. Or just kids. Like, they, they be slurping. They be slurping LeBron's son, too. I I don't like talking about these kids because they kids, man. They, they they kids. And you don't want all this hype to become too much. And I'm not saying him. I'm saying some kids don't know how to deal with stress. So, it leads to them taking substances to, to cope with the stress. I, 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 I don't. I don't. You know, it seemed like he had, his father got his head on the shoulder. And he's watching out for his kids. But... I, that's why I don't like talking about kids in high school and in these lower little, little, you know, these little leagues because you don't know how the kid gonna be able to cope with all the pressure that's that's thrust upon their shoulder instantly. Like people knew about Lamelo Ball, but instantly this dude was everywhere when once he scored these ninety two points. So yep. hopefully, hopefully the kid become, you know, everything everything people say he is. But my question is, the problem with talking about him is what if you know what if he's not. I mean, we just seen Ronda Rousey be on top of the world, and then she get knocked out, and then she says she want to kill herself. Yeah, it's on you. Man, this is a basketball-heavy show. If you don't mind, I know you went to high school for a minute. Can I take it back to the pros? You good with that? Yeah, let's get it. Can we take it to the garden? Can we take it to Madison Square to the garden. garden? Dead ass, B. Dead ass, son. Check this out, man. In <laughs> case you guys didn't know, New York Knicks legend Charles Oakley 
Man, he set the garden on fire. This time it wasn't with his basketball. It was him over there right. signing seven, eight, nine, ten security guards over there, pointing <laughs> in people's faces, mushing people upside the head, pushing security guards, telling them to get their hand off of them. And he was trying to come out to watch. Bro, I believe if he came out that watch, it would have really got ugly. In case you guys yeah. didn't know, man, Charles Oakley has been very vocal on some things that he's not approving of with the New York Knicks. And I don't know what's going mm -hmm. on with these teams, man, but we saw Jeff Fisher, who at the time was the head coach of the L.A. Rams, kind of get really mm -hmm. upset with L.A. Ram legend Eric Dickerson about some criticism he had for the team. So I don't know if these teams yep. feel like if you are an ex-player, you only supposed to say good things about the team. I don't know. But Charles Oakley has been very vocal on things that he don't approve of with the Knicks, and he does not like this owner, Dolan. He don't like him. He don't like him. So they said he's been trying to set up meetings to talk with Dolan. Dolan is not. He ain't entertaining that. He don't want to talk to him. So Oakley said him and some friends bought tickets to the game. Kawinky Dinkley, he bought tickets about three rows back from New York Knicks on a mm -hmm. Dolan. Now, is that a Kawinky Dink? I'm going to go with no here, y'all. I don't know. My spider sense Maybe. is tingling. I'm going to go with no. <laughs> I'm going to go with no. So he's there. He said he was only there for about four and a half minutes when he was approached by a crowd of people, a lot of security people and some police officers, and they told him he got to go. And he says, why? Now, this is his story. Now, wise man told me it's three sides to every story. One person's side, the other person's side, and the truth. They both going to probably give you some lies in there. But he said that they told him you got to go. He said, why? And they said, uh, we have orders. That you you gotta you gotta leave. You've been ordered to leave. So he said, I've only been here for four and a half minutes. You know, I was a, a Nick player, I'm a Nick fan, and it, I don't feel like I should have to leave. I haven't done anything. So long story short, they had to take him out physically. He was arrested, he was charged with a few things, and bro, I don't even know where to start. So I'm gonna pitch it to you. What the hell is going on with the Knicks, bro? What's going on? This is typical. This is typical New York, man. Like Is it? It's just it's just, it's just trash versus trash. Man, let me tell you something. I'm on Oakley's side, Spade. I don't think Oakley did anything wrong. He paid for his ticket out of his hard-earned money. If he a fan, if he was yeah. saying something to Dolan, guess what? He paid his money. If them players got to take it, that owner should have to take it. The, the New York Knicks fans was booing Carmelo. Was yeah. booing him. 30,000 people booing Carmelo, and Melo just got to take it. Dolan can't take it from one from one guy if Oakley was saying something, which I don't think Oakley would do no such a thing. Oakley swear to God on his mother, he didn't say nothing. Oakley swear to God on his mother, Spade. Right. Let me tell yeah. you something, Spade. I heard. I, I just want to say, it, it, it's, just, it's just terrible, man. All jokes aside, it's terrible, man. They, they the, the security, <laughs> the, I don't know why the security guard got fired. The security guy... Got fired that Oakley had the altercation with. I don't know if he got fired because he couldn't handle himself or. He got mushed I, in the face. Yeah, I, I mean, Oakley, Spade, when it happened, I me and you was talking. I said, man, Oakley still out here gooning. Oakley still been goon. a goon. Oakley will always remain a goon. That's what Oakley do. He a goon. Oakley was a goon in the NBA. Yep. Man, people, man, the Bulls got Oakley because they wanted Joe, people to stop messing with Jordan. Like, same thing with the, when the Knicks got him. When the Knicks got Oakley and Anthony Mason, they became, like, bad boy 2.0. Like, they was yep. fighting the Heat. They was fighting the Miami Heat every every game they played. Yep. That was a game I always tuned in because I knew it was going to be a fight. It was always going to be a fight. And I don't mean fight like pushing and shoving. I mean nah. punches were going to be thrown. Comes. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I just want to say that... I, for them to treat Oakley like that is is kind of it, it's a travesty to me, man. Like it's it's the same thing I tell you, Spade, with with other fans of uh like cowboy fans. They tell me, oh, well, you're not a real cowboy fan because you said such and such. I think to be a fan, you have to be you have to critique the good and the bad of your team. I agree. So Oakley, just because Oakley, you said you don't agree? No, nah, I, I agree. Oh. I think just because Oakley says something bad about the Knicks, it's true. The Knicks suck. They bad, Everybody's man. saying the same thing. Yeah, like, it'd be different if like, he's the only person like, saying this stuff. Ain't, that's what I'm saying. Ain't like Oakley out there talking about Dolan done, did some crime or something. Like, right. the Knicks are bad. Oakley's saying the Knicks, is, Knicks are bad. That's a fact. That's a fact. He talked about the moves Phil Jackson made. 
Phil Jackson ain't said nothing. They said Phil Jackson went down to the tunnel and tried to calm Oak down. Like, Oak, calm down. Like, Oak, he said some things about Phil Jackson. And Phil Jackson didn't take it on the channel like, oh, I'm not going down there to help Oak. Oh, he went down there. He talked to Oak, tried to calm him down. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what went wrong in that situation. But I know they had to stop the game. Oak. Oak was mushing a security guard. He punched one in the face. Looked like he tried to grab one somebody face off. <laughs> yeah, he did. I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm team Oak over here, though, Spade. And not just me. LeBron and Wade and Everybody. a bunch of other NBA players are team Oak, too. And, and the fans. Like, the fans have been chanting, you know, bring yeah. back Oakley at the game. Uh, Charles Word. Oakley has they since actually been gave him banned a lifetime ban from Madison Square Garden as well. Yeah, I was going to say, he's been banned for life. Now, here's the one thing. We, we kind of made jokes of it. It was one... Issue out of this that I really, really, really got a problem with. I mean, really got a problem with. Uh, the yeah. New York Knicks issued a statement that basically everything that Charles Oakley's been saying is a lie. Which I guess they got the right to do. But they ended their little statement with, and we hope he gets help soon. And saying yeah. that implied that this man has an issue. And like it's a known issue. Like, like he's got a mental issue or something. And I didn't like that. Dolan was asked about that. What did they mean by that? And he said that he thinks this is what got me. He thinks Charles Oakley is an alcoholic. Well, you don't make you don't even tell people to make a statement like that off what you think. Then he said that especially go ahead. Especially Spade, he's the owner of an NBA exactly. team. Well, I mean, they've they been proven that they fraudulent anyway. Look at Dan Gilbert. Like, you know, this Word. is becoming the standard. You look at uh Donald Sterling. Like, Donald you Sterling. know what I'm saying? These guys, yeah. they they all jacked up. But he also said right. in a statement, he said that several players, I mean not players, several fans said that he was, I can't think of the word that he used, but basically he was acting an ass. You know, Oakley was in that acting wild, rambunctious may have been the word, I don't damn know, but they say he was acting wild, right? He said that if he said any, if he cursed to me, I didn't hear it, but people said, What? So he got kicked out off what you didn't even hear. That's crazy. That's cr that makes me feel like he really didn't cuss at him. I think yeah, he I mean, was saying like things to him. I, I think he was saying things to him. And I don't think it's any chance by coincidence that he bought tickets that close to that guy. Like that just doesn't happen. I'm pretty sure he said some things. Maybe. I'm pretty sure he said some things that wasn't nice. I don't think he deserved to be kicked out unless he was just, you know, unless he was just going OD hard. But whatever, man. This is the Knicks. The Knicks suck. Melo, save yourself. Get out of there. Word. And I'm just saying, if, if Melo got to take it, that owner should have to take the backlash too. You know what? If Melo, if Melo should have to take all that crap from the fans of New York in the in the in the back page of the paper in New York, then Phil Jackson should have to take the take that noise from fans in the paper and show and so should the owner. Like the owner, like. He's notoriously known as one of the worst owners in the NBA too. Like, look at look at his team. Yep. Look at the teams. Yep. They talk about Dolan as him being one of the worst owners in the NBA. And Nick fans that live, especially that live up here, man, they hate Dolan. So th Everybody this isn't this Dolan. isn't me just talking out my ass. Like they say, this dude is the worst one of the worst owners in in the NBA. Yep. Like they say, he don't care if his team win or lose. He just know that the Garden is going to sell out every game. Spike Lee and all these stars are going to be courtside. They're going to be buying thirty thousand dollar or ten thousand dollar a courtside seats. They're going to be at capacity every night. That's all he care about is making money. He don't care if the Knicks good because the Garden sell out every night. So this is notoriously known. So if if Melo and them other players and Chris Taps and all those other guys got to take that backlash. Phil Jackson said I have to take it, and, and so should Dolan. One other thing, then we can move forward. It was one person who I feel like got the keys, man. And I'm talking about okay. uh, ex-tennis legend John McEnroe. McEnroe was there. He was like two rows in. <laughs> Mac, what happened, Mac? Tell us what you heard. Ain't nobody put a what? microphone in Mac's face yet. McEnroe <laughs> knows, y'all. And you right know he's going to keep it 100. Right. You know McEnroe going to be like, well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. You ready to move on, bro? Yeah, man. Spade, we we moving on to the pick'em game. I ended up picking New England. I didn't want to, but they ended up getting the dub. I think I'm up one. We actually tied, but I think I'm up one. Check the tape. Spade, they want us to get check the tape shirts. We got to get check the tape merchandise. Spade, am I, am I up one? You are not up one, sir. Check the tape. 
check the tape. This guy. Anyway, we got a good game for you guys this week. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go OKC versus the Washington Wizards. Both of those teams are. Washington has kind of been on a little hot streak as of late. Yep. They kind of turned things around. Look like Bradley Bill, a healthy Bradley Bill. It really do have you asking, are they the best backcourt in the league? That, that could be a conversation it doesn't have for another show, that, Spade. Bro. John Wall and Bradley Bill. John Wall and Bradley Bill have been having a great season, Spade. That, it don't have me asking that question, though. They don't? Not at all. I mean, I mean, I hear I hear the experts asking. Yeah, I'm better than that. I mean, Charles Barkley said they're the best backcourt in the league, Spade. Yeah, Charles. Is, he all the famous. Charles my man, 50 grand, but go ahead. I'm just saying, but Spade, the pick em game for this week, I'm up one. Check the tape. OKC mm-hmm. versus Washington, Spade. Who you got and why? Um, is John Wall going to play? Yeah. I, yeah, John Wall, been, he's been playing. He been Bradley there. Bill going to play? Yeah, he's been there too. Yeah, give me Washington yeah. then. That's already, that's that's one more star than uh, OKC got. That's easy. Okay, you want to know? That's easy. <laughs> Who you, who you, he's a funny guy. Who you like? I'm I'm I'm, I'm picking OKC. Why would you do that to yourself? This is why you stay behind because in the pick'em game. Because of one man, the one man that got the S on his chest, Russ Cam Newton, Westbrook. No, oh. no, 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 no. Cam Dwight, didn't die for that Dwight ball. Cam, Cam didn't die for that ball in the Super Bowl. <laughs> that ball was Russell, scripted. Right? You think Westbrook <laughs> wouldn't have died though for that football? Westbrook would have went through the ground that to get that football. Was good tonight, man. A Von Miller was one, one of. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm gonna pick OKC, man. I think I think OC, OKC. I think it's gonna be a great game. John Wall versus uh, you know Westbrook. I think that's gonna be a great game. But give me OKC in a close four game, and that will put me up two games. No, give me that. No. What are you give talking? Me OKC. Your, your math is terrible. Your math is terrible, man. Tell us who y'all like in this thing. game. I know it's a lot of Wizards fans out there. Matter of fact, y'all reach out and be like, y'all don't talk about the Wizards enough. Y'all not giving us love. I'm giving yeah, y'all love it. right now. I got y'all in this game. Let your voices be heard. Either tweet us or put it in the comment section. Who you like? Wiz Thunder. You sure you don't want to change that before I move forward? I'm going to give you another chance. Nah, we, nah we, I'm going on KC. It, it, it's a, if I lose, we tied. There you go. Your math is bad. Last segment of the show, man. Very, very important, prestigious award that is really just the best thing you can get from a podcast. Heisman the podcast. It's the best. We call this thing the Strong Arm Performer of the Week. If you could see it, if I had it here, it would be wrapped with diamonds and emeralds and rubies, like a big-ass bowl of Lucky Charms or something. We get this award mm-hmm. to a male or female who raised his or her level of play to ensure that that team got the victory for the previous week. LaParis, you're on the hot seat. Who you got and why? Spade, mm-hmm. I got to give it to my dude who went ham again. Never. Female, and this is Spade. Let me just say this. Disclaimer, this isn't me rubbing it in case Spade face the way he throw hard and out there. Is that means it strong is. Strong on performer of the week every that week. That means it is. Who is uh, it? This isn't me. Somebody from Jersey? I, I can't help it if the guy goes wells. I'm a fan. I can't help it. Who is and it? I want to give it to Nikola Jokic. He had 40 points. He shot... 17 to 23 from the field, 2 and 3 from 3. Also had 9 rebounds, 5 dimes, 2 steals, and a 131 to 123 win over the New York Knicks. Now, I know that score is insane. The Knicks? The Knicks? The, they played the Knicks. Did we just say the Knicks was terrible? We what literally you mean? just said the Knicks Denver's were terrible. Denver's terrible. Denver's terrible. But, but Yoke it ain't. Nicole and Jokic went wheels and dropped 40 on Chris Tapps. Chris Tapps, where you was at? I think Chris Tapps fouled out that game. But Jokic went ham, and for that reason right there, Nicole and Jokic, you are my strong arm performer of the week. Spade, he a beast. Put some respect on that man's name. You know what? I think it's time to start the petition. No, no, more no, no, no. Jokic. No, no, no. You, can, you cannot do that. He only been a strong arm performer for two times. James Harden has we got 103 weeks. episodes. James Harden has been strong on performer of the week a hundred times. It is not equal. If I'm not mistaken, you gave James Harden the last one, and Jokic has been That's your only of the week you twice banned. in three weeks. Your That's last three only weeks you banned. has been Jokic and Harden. Jokic only been strong on performer. We can't ban Jokic yet. No way. No way. Anyway, I, I that's not right. allow it. How many points he had? 40 against 40. the Knicks, that, which is a bad yeah. team. I got a better one. I got okay. your true strong on performer of the week recipient right here. We're going down to Nolens. And I ain't talking about Lil Wayne for this one. I'm talking about Anthony the Brown Davis 
who had a matchup against Carl Anthony Towns, another he didn't get premier her. big man in the league. What's his sir? He didn't get her? No, he didn't get her. And see, he was thinking about coming to the show. But since you want to keep trolling the man, he probably not going to come now. Way to go. Mm. Sorry, Anthony. Anyway, Anthony Davis had 42 points, 13 rebounds, 2 dimes, and the win against the Minnesota T-Wolves. You are my strong arm performer of the week for that performance. Bruh, well deserving, man. You better than Jokic. Is so you want to bang oh. the cannon on Jokic for playing the Knicks, but not bang the cannon on AD for playing Minnesota? Minnesota's a, a good team. Oh, shit. Spade, is it Jokic or Jokic? I call it, it's, I call him Jokic, but they say it's Jokic. But I right. call him, I call him the truth. Cause he a beast. I want to put. I, I want to put ch at the end of mine. So t for me, he's Jokic. Listen, Spade. We want everybody that watched the show leave your strong arm performer of the week. Maybe we forgot somebody. Maybe we overlooked somebody. I know people gonna put James Harden and Westbrook and LeBron. Let's 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 get away from those. Let's get away from those guys. Let's get away from those guys. Let's put some unknowns down there. We gotta give the award to people that. You know, probably won't receive the award. So leave your strong arm performer of the week in the comment section down below. Spade, you got anything else to add before I close? Yeah, because I'm against what you just said. I'm against that. You, I'm not going to let you mess with the purity of this award. Like, oh my it's about who's deserving, bro. And if James Harden is deserving, James Harden get the award. This James ain't the Hall Harden of Fame over banned. here. This ain't the Hall of Fame over here. We're not keeping T.O. out because we mad because he got more <laughs> six-packs than we got. Like, James that's not, Harden is bad, babe. Nah, fam. That's not what we're doing over here. This is pure. I take that segment seriously, bro. I don't care how many times they won. If they deserve it, they deserve it. Go ahead. You just you just try to get the petition ban to get Nicola out of here. Well, that's true, but... Yeah. And, oh, and he only won it two times. But anyway. In three weeks. Listen, man. We want to thank y'all for tuning in to Strong Arm Sports this week, man. The realest podcast, the realest podcast in all the land. Not just sports. The realest podcast in all the land. Yep, that's true. Listen, man. We want to thank y'all for tuning in. As we say all the time, we greatly appreciate you guys' support. As usual, if you're a regular here, hit the like button. And take two seconds here. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Don't take that long, man. And I mean, you want to get great sports content here. Anyway, if you don't want to see two dudes in a box arguing, you got audio, podcasts everywhere, SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes, Top 60 on iTunes, yeah, download yeah. us, subscribe, leave, you know, leave feedback. We greatly appreciate you guys. We love the guys that be tweeting us saying, yo, y'all should talk about blah, blah, blah. We welcome all that support. Bring it in. We're working on, I'm working on check your tape shirts. People want check the tape. They want that as a shirt. We're working on some other things we got other uh other outside things we also working on definitely trying to make the show as big as possible and as better as possible for you guys we want to thank mm -hmm. y'all for your continued support spade you got anything else to add nope well we'll see you guys next episode we out peace, peace.